Good evening, participants of BNB Second E Course Viber Pre-Conference Discussions. I am the last presenter of this session and would like to admit that it has been a valuable learning and interacting opportunity for all of us in a new interface of Viber and YouTube. I, Rupesh Vaidya, would like to thank Dr. Rajiv Razmanander and Dr. Chandra Mishra for moderating my presentation on diagnosis of PCL injury clinical examinations. Since this is the last lecture, let me quickly go through the basics of evaluation of capsular ligament structure of the knee joint, which I believe is of utmost importance in understanding the clinical examination of the knee joint for the beginners as well as the experts. To evaluate the knee ligaments, we need to know the functional anatomy of the knee and the knowledge of the basic principles which consists of the motion of the knee, the motion spectrum of the knee, concept of laxity and instability of the knee, and the principles of examination of the knee joint. Motion of the knee. All the knee movements are defined as where tibia moves relative to the stationary femur. There are three mutually perpendicular axes, which are sagittal, transverse and vertical. And there are three mutually perpendicular planes. They are transverse, frontal and sagittal planes. This three-dimensional system of axes and planes is not fixed in space but is constantly moving as a function of knee flexion, tibial rotation, applied forces, individual factors and the condition of the capsule and ligaments. There are two types of movements of the knee, rotation around the axis translation or sliding of one surface over another on a plane parallel to the axis of orientation. Degree of freedom is a term applied to the ability of a body to rotate around an axis or translate on a plane. There are three degrees of freedom in rotation, abduction and adduction in sagittal axis, flexion and extension in transverse axis, internal and external rotation in vertical axis. There are three degrees of freedom in translation, anterior and posterior translation in transverse plane, proximal and distal translation in sagittal plane, and medial and lateral translation in frontal plane. In examinations of the capsular ligament structures of the knee, it must be understood that the mechanisms of knee stabilization act not just in one position but in many. This three-dimensional system of axes and planes is not fixed in space but is constantly moving as a function of knee flexion, tibial rotation, applied forces, individual factors and the condition of the capsule and ligaments. Laxity is a physiological loosening of ligaments that does not require treatment, thus the need to test the normal side as well, whereas instability is pathological laxity after injury, etc., causing the patient to experience a functional loss that is subjectively disabling. Coming to the principles of examinations, one should be aware of a good doctor-patient relationship for optimum muscular relaxation and to reduce pain and anxiety of the patient. One should be aware of the timing of examination, whether it's an acute 
or a chronic phase. There are active and passive tests of the knee examinations and one should be able to evaluate the endpoint resilience. One should be aware of specific knee examinations and most of the time these are complex knee injuries where there are complex disruptions of different ligaments in different degrees rather than, than isolated ligamentous injuries. And the final diagnosis is based not on a single laxity test but on a combination of different tests. Some words on evaluation of endpoints. Endpoint resilience is evaluated in all passive laxity tests. Soft endpoints are experienced when the stabilizing ligaments are completely disrupted and their function has been taken over by secondary ligamentous restraint. Hard or form endpoints are felt when the structures being tested are intact or only partially torn and can still exert their stabilizing functions. More diagnostic tests have been derived for the knee joint than for any other joint in the human body. Some of these tests differ only by a subtle change of hand position. Thus, learning a proper knee examination is crucial in developing one's clinical diagnostic skills and confidence. This three-dimensional system of axes and planes is not fixed in space but is constantly moving as a function of knee flexion, tibial rotation, applied forces, individual factors and the condition of the capsule and ligaments. Symptoms of physical injury. The patients might come with discomfort in a semiflex position, ascending or descending stairs, discomfort in the knee while starting to run, or lifting a load, or walking longer distances. They might come with retropatella pain symptoms because of patella sagging. They might come as well with swelling and stiffness or feeling of instability when walking on even, uneven grounds. To evaluate the knee ligaments, we need to know the functional anatomy of the knee and the knowledge of the basic principles which consists of the motion of the knee, the motion spectrum of the knee, concept of laxity and instability of the knee, and the principles of examination of the knee joint. I would like to talk on these four examinations which is relevant in our routine PCL examination. The posterior dryer test, the posterior sac test, quadriceps active test and the dial test. The posterior dryer test. The classical posterior dryer test is performed with the patient in supine position with his knee flexed to 90 degrees and he flexed to 45 degrees and with tibia in internal, neutral or external rotation. The internal rotation we check for the PCL and the tibial collateral ligaments whereas in the external rotation we check for PCL and the postural corner. Houston calls attention to the fact that the negative posterior dryer test may be obtained following an acute rupture of PCL 
an intact arcuate complex may prevent the posterior displacement. I would like to show some illustration with my apologies of my unedited videos and with on a normal knee. Translation of more than 5 mm is positive for PCL. So if you want to do it in the internal rotation, fix the put in the internal rotation and do the same maneuver to see if there is any positive translation or not. Then in external rotation, do the same maneuver to see if there is any translation or not. Illustration of posterior sac test. Sac test. So we look at the from the side of the knee and see the anterior tibial contour on both sides. To see the anterior tibial contour on both sides in PCL injury, anterior tibial contour goes posterior. What is the active test? In this test. The patient lies supine with the hip flexed to 45 degrees and knee flexed to 90 degrees and foot flat on the table. The examiner holds the patient's foot down on the table and asks the patient to attempt to raise the foot. As the quadriceps muscle contracts, the examiner observes the change in anterior contour of the knee. If the knee ligament is intact, Quadriceps contraction will cause the proximal end of the tibia to move posteriorly by 0 to 2 mm. As shown in the picture above, the resultant force Fx is directed posteriorly. If PCL is torn, the resultant force will anteriorly displace the proximal tibia. This is the real advantage of this test in evaluating PCL. Daniel states that this test is superior to the classic posterior drawer test. The important thing here is only the quadriceps muscle is contracted. The appropriate instruction for the patient is, please raise your foot from the examining table. Simultaneous contraction of the hamstrings would prevent or significantly restrict anterior displacement of the tibia. Modified active dryer test is where one exaggerates the posterior sagging by hamstring contraction, then later do the quads active test, which can be followed by anterior dryer test to check for any coexisting ACL insufficiency. Please observe the demonstration. Uh, the patient is lying supine, knee in 90 degrees flexion, 45 degrees flexion. We have to fix the foot to the ground and we have to see the hamstrings are relaxed and we ask the patient to raise his foot upwards. So as we can see the quadriceps muscle tightening and in a normal release, now release, tighten your quads, foot matigara. Okay, in normally we can see the PCL is intact, uh, there is a slight posterior movement of the tuberosity of around 0 to 2 millimeters, but in the case of PCL injury, the posterior tibia, proximal tibia shifts forward because of the quadriceps contraction. Release got it, actually. Okay. So, 
uh, we can modify this test a little bit. It's called the modified active quadricep test, where you ask the patient to to pull his heel towards his buttock. So here you can see the hamstrings tightening. So if there is any compensated PCL uh, thingy, the hamstring pulls the proximal tibia back. Now, then you ask the patient to pull his foot upwards. So now, you relax the hamstring. You put foot like this. So you see the hamstrings are loose. You see the quadriceps tighten. At this moment, you can see if there is a PCL laxity, you can see the proximal tibia coming forward because of the contraction of the quadriceps. Now what you can do after this is you want to check if there is any anterior drawer or ACL laxity also. So you pull and do an anterior drawer test like this. So if the proximal tibia comes forward more, you can say that there is a concomitant ACL injury. Dial test is another important test for PCL and postural collar injury. Dial test can be performed if the patient is supine or prone position with both knees in 90 degrees or 30 degree of flexion. Let's see the dial test in supine position. PCL injury, we can do the dial test. Dial test can be done in supine position and also in the prone position. So. Uh, the knee should be in 90 degrees of flexion and 30 degrees of flexion. So in the supine position, we flex the knee to 90 degrees, relax, and we hold the foot and do the excellent rotation of the foot. So if there is an extra laxity on one side, we can say that there is a PCL injury. And in the 30 degrees of flexion, we do the external rotation of the ankle joint. So we can compare on both sides if there is any extra laxity and extra rotation. In 30 degrees, we are checking for the posterior lateral trauma. Dial test in prone position. For the patient, so you flex the knees to 90 degrees, hold the foot, and do the external rotation. So you, you can check if there is an extra external rotation on either side so this is for PCL and do the same thing in 30 degrees of flexion check for the external rotation so this is the dial test in the prone position in examinations of the capsular ligament structures of the knee it must be understood that the mechanisms of knee stabilization act not just in one position but in many The clinical examinations should be followed by other studies for confirming the diagnosis such as x-rays, MRI or arthroscopy. Thank you for your attention and see you tomorrow in the Viber Interactive Group discussion. We would like to see you all in the second BNB knee course going to be held on 28th and 29th. July 2017. Thank you once again.